When you're welding, there are a lot of things you could pay attention to. Picking the right things to focus on is gonna make all the difference. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about shielded metal arc welding or stick welding and what I think the real secret is to getting a really nice high quality weld. It really comes down to just doing the best job you can at three basic fundamental elements of technique. That's gonna get you 80 or 90% of the way there. Let's go ahead and break down each of those right now. First thing that's really important to get down with welding technique is your arc length for the distance from the end of the electrode down to your workpiece. Let's take a look at what happens when your arc is too long. If you take a look at this, the molten metal is just kind of flying all over the place. There's a lot of spatter and it's out of control. Also, it spreads out and it's really broad. The further you get from the end of the electrode, the wider it gets. And that's why you get this wide weld bead. Now that weld actually doesn't look terrible, though it's wider than I would like, but when you move to weld on an actual joint here, that's where the problems become worse. You can see it's hard to keep it focused right where it needs to be. It sort of skips around, as well as creating a whole bunch of spatter and mess. Now I'll move in close and look at how it changes instantaneously. All of a sudden I have control over my weld and I'm able to get a good result. Back to welding on the coupons, let's try moving in a little bit with a little bit better arc length. Now this looks much better and it's in uh, much better control than we had before, but it's still longer than I would like. You see with this 7018 electrode, the center core actually melts up inside of the flux a little bit, so there's some of the arc that you can't see, and this is actually a little longer than you might think it is. Let's take a look at the result that we got from that, and it's definitely quite a bit better than the first one but it could be even a little bit better than that by tightening things up a little bit, just giving me a little extra control. This is what's nice to see. You can see the actual weld pedal is in good control with that slag falling right behind it. And I'll take this one. All right, you may be thinking that's great, Tim. I gotta keep a short arc length, but how do I actually do it in practice? Well, it is easier said than done like most things. Um, it comes down to quite a bit of practice and just arc time, working through some exercises, especially padding beads on plate like we do a lot of in my online course. Uh, but a few practical tips are propping and support. See, when I just move my wrist a little bit, notice how much the end of that electrode moves. So anything I can do to stabilize that by propping is gonna make a big difference. I like to use my elbow and my hand primarily, sometimes a pinky and thumb and collapse that down can work pretty well. But let me just show you here with my elbow and my hand. As I weld along here, you can see that the electrode is moving in and it's moving along the edge of the plate. Now, sometimes that works out to be the right pace, but with smaller electrodes, especially like a 332nd or 2.4 millimeter electrode, sometimes you actually need to feed in more electrode than will naturally happen just by progressing along the plate. And the way to do that is just collapse your fingers. See, so I'm welding here, and as I collapse my fingers in, that allows more rod to go down into the weld than would naturally happen if I were just pivoting it down around. Now let's take a look at the electrode angle. Notice how I'm keeping the angle between the electrode and the plate the same all the way along here. And what that does is it forces the metal and the slag that goes over the top where it needs to be. See that slag line that follows right behind the molten weld puddle? That's what we want to see. Now if I tip it really far here like that, this is exaggerated quite a bit, but you can see I'm having some of the same trouble that I was having when I was running too long of an arc. On the other hand, I've never actually tried this before, but I think I'd try pushing it forward with the 7018, and that really uh, did not work very well. I can see why they say if there's slag, then drag, because take a look at this. As I'm welding, first of all, it's just hard to even get it going, uh, not being used to move in this direction, but the slag is going in front of the weld pool and having to travel around to the back, and that's just gonna be problematic, and I, uh, I might pass on that one. Now let me break down angles for you here a little bit. So there are two different ways to look at your angle. It's the direction you're looking at it. So if you're traveling along this way, this right here, this angle is your travel angle. And you typically want that pointing backwards a little bit. What that does is it helps to push that slag that goes over top the weld from the flux, 
helps push that back behind you. The one exception to that is if you're welding vertically, a lot of times you can push upward like this. You typically want to, or be more or less straight in and out because the gravity is going to kind of pull that slag down for you. The other direction to look at it is from your work. If I have two pieces that I'm putting together like this, and I'm going to weld them. See, I'm gonna to wanna to come straight in and out of it. And on a T-joint like this, I would be coming in at like 45 degree angle beneath it. Sometimes you need to drop it just a little bit to help push things up on the upside, depending on the position you're in. But in general, pretty close to 45 degrees is gonna work out pretty well for you. With your arc length and angle under control, now it comes down to movement and how you progress along the plate. And that has a major impact in how your weld actually turns out. All right, when it comes down to your movement, there are two things to think about. You have manipulation and travel speed. By manipulation, I mean, are you moving your electrode in any kind of a pattern around? I see more different ideas for every which way you could draw some picture with your electrode. And I'm gonna tell you right now, with most electrodes, it's not necessary. 7018, 6013, 7014, uh, you can run just straight along the weld. Now, if you wanna make some little tiny circles while staying within your weld pool to help you maintain your pace, I'm not gonna be mad at you for that, but you don't need to go crazy with it. That being said, if you're running a 6010 or a 6011 electrode, usually you do need to move around a little bit. Now with those, the most common way to manipulate the rod is with what's called a whip and pause, where you'll move forward a little bit and you're back in it over and over to give some control. Now when it comes to travel speed, this is where you really need to learn to see your weld and watch what's going on with that molten metal, not with the slag that's falling over, but the actual weld pool itself. And the reason for that is your travel speed controls the size of your weld. See, so if you are traveling more slowly, there's more time at each point along here to deposit filler metal in there and give you a larger weld. The opposite is also true. If you're traveling quickly, you're gonna get a smaller weld. Now there are limits on both ends of this. On the fast end, if you travel too quickly, oftentimes you'll melt out more space than you actually have time for the filler metal to fill in. And so you end up with a little recess right next to the weld and that's called undercut and it can be problematic in some cases. The solution to that is usually traveling a little bit slower and you often need to turn down your amperage just a little bit to go along with that. On the other hand, if you travel too slowly, you can build so much heat up that you'll actually melt right through your material, especially on thinner plates. The important thing right now is to get out there and practice before you forget all this. I made this video right now because I'm in the middle of a new comprehensive stick welding basics for beginners tutorial from start to finish every aspect of the process. And I thought the technique just needed a little bit of extra focus and attention and deserved its own video. So keep an eye out for that full tutorial coming out soon on the channel. Also, if you wanna really get serious about this, I have online courses linked in the description below. I keep them as affordable as possible and I'll walk you through every step of the way with practice exercises to really have one thing to focus on at a time and really learn your technique. So check those out in the description below if that's something you'd be interested in. I also offer a money back guarantee if you find it's really not the right fit for you, but I think you'll find it's extremely helpful. Anyway, thanks a ton for tuning in today. Until next time, weld safely, and we'll see you then.